Welcome back. Here we go. Last week, title page. Get that done. Get it up. Make it look good so you got good first impressions. Reasons being, other people will actually look at it rather than just myself. And it can add to your portfolio that helps you in the future. Next thing you have to do, start to develop a mind map of your ideas to make sure that you're getting those ideas out of your head and on paper. That's basically what a journal is, is trying to actually document the paths that we're actually taking so we know what we're doing with our project. After you've actually done your mind map based on the theme that you want to carry out, the learning that you want to occur, and then how you're going to assess it, you needed to make a generic statement, well, not quite generic, but a very pointed statement about what your project is going to be. Again, open brief, which is probably one of the hardest things to actually do. So by narrowing it down, it gives you a focus and it actually gives me a better idea of how to help. So this week, where do we actually go? Again, remembering with this here, the blue headings are the ones that you want to actually keep. Doesn't mean they need to stay in blue. You can make them whatever color that you want, but it's there to actually stay. The second one, the words in black, is the stuff that you want to actually keep as well, mainly because it gives a little bit of an explanation and direction to the reader. Again, these is, uh, this is suggested. If you want to actually change it to make it better, you go for it, okay? But I'm suggesting keep the headings because that's what I'm actually looking for when I come to assess. Okay, the needs of the user of the information system. Okay, so if I actually just have a look at it, so what does your niche market user need for this project to be a success? That is, what do they need to learn through your Canvas site? Now, I know I'm actually harping on to a couple of you guys a fair bit about coding. What's actually happening out there, and I'm not sure if you realize it, is that the government's come through and said, right, everyone needs to learn how to code. It's a really important thing that we need to do. It's a STEM initiative. We've got to, got to, got to, got to. The problem is, a lot of your teachers, and don't tell them I said this, um, can't code. They don't know how to code. They don't want to learn to code. Like, could you imagine um, your teacher that actually in year eight came in with a real passion to teach food technology and textiles or timber and metal? Doesn't matter. If all of a sudden they're actually told, you have to teach coding, which is totally foreign to them, it's been blowing your teacher's mind. It's the same the other way. If you come in and you've got this passion with coding and then all of a sudden you need to know the turning speeds for a metal lathe in a, a mild piece of steel that will be annealed into the future and case hardened, man, you don't want a part of that and I wouldn't blame you. So what I'm actually saying here in this case here, what is the needs for the users of your system? So here, what does your niche market need to do? So in order for people to learn how to code my biggest thing is they need to make something from it I can tell you there is nothing worse than doing a course and finding out that it goes nowhere if you want to teach people how to code if you want to teach people how to cook if you want to teach people how to like use a timber lathe they need to be able to have something, they need to be able to walk away with something at the end. So what I'm saying is, they need to learn how to code. It could be a game. It could be um, a robotics object. It doesn't matter, but the code needs to do something. If you're gonna teach people how to cook, you need to be specific in what they're actually going to cook and say that end result will be a three course meal. Um, a three course meal, uh, of a Middle Eastern flavor. It doesn't matter what it is, but you need to actually know what you're trying to learn here. So it's pretty much a statement of intent. This is what's actually going to actually happen here. Now, when it comes to the... So again, like I've just done the one sentence here, you need to really flesh this out a little bit more so that you actually know what you're actually going to do. Again, this is a journal of your progress. Okay, so... Pretty much this is a guide for your learning and we need to see this guide come through 
as you're working. And what I'm saying there is if you're saying you're going to do coding here, your research and action planning that's going to occur further on down the track needs to be about coding. And then from there, it needs to actually be coming through your Canvas site about coding. So if you're talking through your journal, coding, 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 and all of a sudden you come out with a hot dog, there's no alignment. You need to make sure that the two actually align so that they work together. This is quite an interesting one when you actually start to think about it, who, who the participants are, okay? Now, again, I'm just filling this in as I actually go, but again, delete the scaffold, make sure you've got your headings and the actual words. Sorry, I should have mentioned as well, if photos can actually help what you're trying to explain, throw photos in. This is a document that's supposed to help us communicate. Anything that helps is good. So here, you need to think about who the participants are, what their genders are, what their age groups are, and what their interests. So say, for example, you want to do coding. Let's stick on this for a second. You've got a year seven student, student that loves Minecraft. You can understand that they're going to have a whole lot of different skills to a 70-year-old man that has just retired and never used a computer. So I'm guessing, like when we're actually talking about your niche market, you really need to choose how you, who you're going to teach to. This, in this case, would be a whole lot easier than this. You can see here, if you're actually teaching to retirees in the 70-year-old man, you're going to have to go back and teach things about clicking a mouse because they won't understand that terminology. You might even get have to go back to a stage where it's turn the computer on. Okay, I know it's hard to hear and it's quite laughable, but there are some people in our society that would never have used a computer and, no, and have no intention of using one. So again here, knowing where that person starts can actually be of a benefit to you as a teacher so you can know how to actually aid them. So here, prior to actually starting the project, you need to know what data and information that you're actually going to be required to collect. Here, the biggest thing, like when I'm actually, when I was working as a head of a department, the first thing I'd actually say to all of my teachers is make the project. What actually happens in a lot of times is we get these great ideas as teachers, and I'm calling you guys teachers now because you've got your Canvas site and you're gonna teach people things. As teachers, we get these great ideas and we start working on them and we spend all this time and we get them up and running only to find out that they don't work for whatever reason. It might be your skill set versus uh, your student's skill set. It might be the fact that you're envisaging uh, a material that you can use, but you then you might not be able to get it. Okay? So the first thing I would actually suggest you guys do is start to make that project to understand that you've got a clear idea of what you're doing. Again, when it comes to coding here, I know some of you guys could probably code with your eyes closed. Okay? Excuse me. But what you're going to find is there's going to be little techniques that you didn't realise that you do, and you're going to have to explain that. So, for example, what software are you going to use? What's that interface? Okay? What, um, what are the commands that you're going to do? What is the game about? How do you develop a game? that gaming idea, and all those sorts of things are, is the data and the information you need to know. So here in this case, I'd actually say make the project and then come in here uh, for the project to be a success, it will need, and then just start dot pointing all the different data and information that you'd actually require here for it to be a success, okay? Again, this is your planning document. It doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be really pretty, but again, however you can actually communicate. So if I was actually doing this, to be quite honest, 
I don't even possibly have a picture of the object that I wanted them to make so that I could keep coming back and thinking about that. And you know what? By seeing that project of the game encoding or the meal to be cooked, it's going to be a whole lot of better understanding for me as well. Okay. So the next part here, oh, let's get rid of this. All right. Is what information technology and other tools and equipment will you need for the project? Oh, sorry, one more thing. Let me come back here as well. Here as well, like obviously a thing, I'll just put this in here. Uh, need to know how to use Canvas. No brainer, okay? And this is what I mean. Like by thinking about the project and what you've actually got to do, and quite frankly, that's what just happened here when I started looking about information technology. I realized that that's a dot point that all of you are going to actually have. Don't panic, that will come later on. But you can see here by starting to write it down, I've now got a place to go back to and a better understanding of how the rest of this is going to happen. Okay, now, and again, I know this sounds terribly frustrating and I know it sounds foolish and I know you've already got this in place, but it's all part of the planning. What you're going to find actually in industry is sometimes you're going to have to prove your project to others and those others will not have the background that you've actually got. They've got their position because they're really good at managing. doesn't mean that they've got great skills in actually creating. So you need to actually be on top of this to explain it to them. Here, what computing hardware and software will you need to develop the course? Now, when I'm actually talking about this here, I'm actually talking about, um, obviously, the computers that you're using, the software application, one would be Canvas, but even in the case of this here where I'm making a movie for you, I need to actually have access to QuickTime. Yeah. So it's all those little things that you're going to need to actually create this course in its best possible light you need to actually think about. The second one here is what will others need to actually do it? Again, computer and Canvas as a basic model, like you know, you're going to both need that so you can communicate. But they won't necessarily need quick time to create a film, but they will need some other form of movie viewing software that they could actually use. Okay, so again, it's thinking about that along the way. Now, while we're talking about computing hardware and software here, you need to think about the other tools and resources that you could actually use. So, for example, if you've got this passion with food and you wish to actually t teach cooking, you've got to think about the things that you will need to be able to deliver that learning. You're going to need pots, pans, you're going to need food. I'm not saying that you've got to get specific and say it's going to be um, a seafood meal for 17 people um, that have a passion for tiger prawns coming out of cans. You don't need to be that sort of specific. But what you need to do is have a good idea of what you'll actually need. So in this case here, you'll need access to a kitchen. You'll need pots and pans. You'll need utensils. You'll need food to actually cook with. Depending on how you're going to show the learning, you actually may need a camera of some description to show what you're actually going to do. Some recording software. The whole idea here is like thinking about what it is that you're going to do and get it, making sure you've got access to those resources before you go too far. Again, by actually making the project here, it will inform you here about what is actually needed. Okay? So, quick recap, statement about what the project actually is. Here, thinking about what the project is and coming up with definitive statements and what people will need. Who are you going to actually teach this to? Right? Really important because one person has a totally different learning needs to another. I would actually say if you're looking at doing some form of project that you want people to do, or you want them to think, make it. Go and make that little outside project. If it's like how to shop, go shopping. If it's about how to cook, go cook, go fishing, go fishing. Go and do those things. And that's what it coming back to my original intent from last time. 
make sure that you're doing a project that you really like to do because you're going to be spending a fair amount of time in it. From there, think about your computer hardware and software for you and for others. And then think about the different tools that you would need based on your learning experience. If you can do that, you're really well on your way. And then we can start having getting into the meat of the actual project. Again, don't panic about the use of Canvas. That's coming soon, probably in about week eight, where I'll sit down and teach you how to use the tools in Canvas. Thanks guys for listening. Give it a go. Let me know that you're doing the work so I can give you some feedback via the comments and stuff. Um, so make sure you get me shared into those documents as well. Thanks. Talk to you soon.